Moving on, the complement of an event consists of all outcomes not in the event. The sum of the probabilities of an event is its complement is 1. We can express that as the probability of an event plus the probability of not the event is equal to 1, or the probability of not the event is equal to 1 minus the probability of the event. Working with uh, complements makes things easier sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't, so you have to decide. Example 2T, finding the complement of an event. For a number cube, find the probability of not rolling a number divisible by 3. So we write this out, the probability of not rolling a number divisible by 3. Now this one here, not necessarily the best example to illustrate the complements of an event. But it will work. So the probability of not rolling a number divisible by 3, well, that's going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of rolling a number divisible by 3. Now, the numbers divisible by 3 on the number cube are 3 and 6. So the probability of rolling a number divisible by 3 would be 2. And that would give us a probability of 2 over 6 and we have to subtract that from 1. So 1 take away 2 over 6. Well, if you need to see this, the 1 we can rewrite as 6 over 6, because that is equivalent to 1, minus 2 over 6, which gives us 4 over 6. So the probability of not rolling a number divisible by 3 is 4 over 6, and that does reduce by a factor of 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So ultimately, the probability of not rolling a number divisible by 3 is equal to 2 thirds. And I used the complement, meaning I took 1 minus the probability of rolling a number divisible by 3. Here's another example of the complement of an event. Example 2S. For a standard deck of cards, what is the probability of not drawing a queen? So let's write that out. The probability of not a queen. I'll just use a capital Q for the queen. There are 52 cards in the deck, so using the complement, the probability of not a queen is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of drawing a queen. And we can rewrite that as 1 minus, and the probability of drawing a queen, there are four queens in the deck, deck being our favorable outcome, and there are 52 cards in the deck being the total number of outcomes. If you need to, you can write this as 52 over 52. That would be rewriting 1 as the fraction 52 over 52. And from that, we need to subtract 4 over 52. And that becomes... 48 over 52. And like the other examples, we need to reduce here or simplify the fraction. Both of these fractions are divisible, or both of these numbers are divisible by 4. 48 divided by 4 gives 12. And 52 divided by 4 gives 13. So the probability of not drawing a queen is 12 to 13, or 12 out of 13. So you've got 12 chances out of 13 of not drawing a queen. Odds describe the likelihood of an event by comparing favorable outcomes to unfavorable outcomes. Odds in favor of an event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over the number of unfavorable outcomes. The odds against an event is equal to the number of unfavorable outcomes over the number of favorable outcomes. In favor, favorable outcomes goes on top. Against, unfavorable outcomes goes in the numerator.
Here's example 3T. Find the odds for the spinner to the right. Uh, find the odds in favor of the spinner landing on an even number. So the favorable outcomes would be an even number. Even numbers are 2, 4, 6, and 8. So there are four favorable outcomes, which leaves us with four unfavorable outcomes. And like any fraction or ratio, we need to reduce that. So that would be a one-to-one -one odds. You have an even money chance of giving or of spinning an even number. In example B, we need to find the odds in favor of the spinner landing on a multiple of three. Well, favorable outcomes would be the multiples of three. Multiples of three here would be three and six. So that would be two favorable outcomes, leaving us with six unfavorable outcomes. So we have a two to six chance of spinning or the spinner landing on a multiple of three. That can reduce. Both of those numbers are divisible by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have a one, uh, the odds are 1 to 3 in favor of spinning a multiple of 3. Where it can get confusing is when we talk about the odds against. Remember, the odds against an event happening are the unfavorable outcomes over the favorable outcomes. In this case, the event is the spinner landing on a number less than 5. So that would be the number, a number less than 5 would be a favorable outcome. So that's going to be our second number. Numbers less than 5. 4, 3, 2, and 1. So numbers less than 5. Well, you know what, let's change this to 6. Let's change this to 6. The uh, odds against the spinner landing on a number less than 6, which would include then numbers less than 6 being our favorable outcomes, which would be the second number, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So that would give us five favorable outcomes, and the unfavorable outcomes would be 6, 7, and 8. So the odds against the spinner landing on a number less than 6 is 3 to 5. And here's our last example, example 3S, on, uh, under theoretical probability, in this case, actually finding odds. We select a three-digit number at random from the set of all positive three-digit integers. Remember, our sample space is 900 here. This is our sample space. That's from an earlier example. We want to find the odds of each circumstance. Um, finding the odds of a 500, a 501, or a 502. Well, that would give us three favorable outcomes. Unfavorable outcomes we have to figure out by taking 900 and subtracting away 3. Now, that's pretty simple subtraction. That would give us 897. So the odds of randomly selecting a 500, a 501, or a 502 would be 3 to 897. Now, you may not think it, but uh, this actually does reduce. And it reduces to 1 to 299. So the odds in favor of randomly drawing a 500, a 501, or a 502 is 1 to 299. Not a very good chance of doing that at all. The odds against a multiple of 10. Again, odds against can be a little bit confusing. Just remember that the favorable outcome is going to be the uh, drawing a multiple of 10. So let's take a look at finding the multiples of 10 here. Remember from earlier, we're going to start with 100. 
and we need to find multiples of 10. Well, 100 is a multiple of 10. 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, and 190 are all multiples of 10 in the 100s. And remember, we have nine sets of 100. So if, since there's 10, the number of multiples of 10 are going to be, or since there's 10 multiples of 10 in each 100, we go 9 times 10 to get 90. So there are 90 favorable outcomes. And remember, when we do odds against, that's the second number. So that would be 90 over here. And if there's 90 favorable outcomes, we take 900 and we subtract away from it 90 to get the unfavorable outcomes of 810. And this is the number of unfavorable outcomes. And that comes first in our ratio or our fraction. And that gives us 810 to 90. And since both of these numbers are divisible by 90, that's going to reduce to 90 to 1. So the odds against a multiple of 10 are pretty good. This has been Mr. Pye on theoretical probability, finding the theoretical probability and odds of an event. If this video has helped you, feel free to leave a comment.